the app for the agenda. So we are now um, looking at monitoring business processes with business KPIs in SAP Cloud ALM. My name is Stefanie Jerch. I'm product manager for business process monitoring. And with me is Thomas Muller. He's from SOA People, and he is working in ALM topics since 20 years. So he has a lot of more insights into these topics, history, and he's guiding customers and implementing topics with the customers and also making sure that an ALM strategy and ALM awareness is available on customer side. We prepared um, four areas as part of the session. First of all, I will give a short um, basics and fundamentals on business process monitoring. Afterwards, I'll directly hand over to customer insights where we will also have a comprehensive demo and followed by a feature spotlight. So if you've heard in the fireside chat, for example, um, the question on the access control. So how can we restrict what an end user is seeing in the business process monitoring? We also um, heard this topic, I guess, in another session or, or hands-on it was raised. And this is really what I would like to show to you, explain to you so that you are prepared for using it and using it also in the tenant in order to roll it out the best possible within your environment. And last but not least, we are for sure concluding. So there are a lot of further information with you. The influencing is also open. And with this, let me quickly mention we have a disclaimer. I do not plan to tell you anything which you should not know, but if there are any questions, we are also afterwards available, and then we can also discuss certain aspects, whatever you would like to know around this topic. And with that, you can imagine or you do know how important end-to-end -end processes are. And if we do look at an end-to-end -end process, we started with a monolithical architecture in the past, or let's say two or three years back. So it was very easy to monitor. We had one or two on-prem systems, and there was, um, it wasn't that complex to know exactly, is my process running? Now the landscape evolved. There are services, systems behind, wherever they are. It's not important anymore what service it is. It is important that the process is running. And if you are looking at such a process, um, there are various views we can check. So if I ask someone from finance department, everything fine at your end, he is looking at postings. He would say, whenever the postings, everything is booked or checked, nothing, um, let's say, not too much outstanding, everything is fine. But if I do ask a sales representative, he would look at opportunities and would tell me, yes, we have, we have leads, we have opportunities, we have a good co um, closing rate, we win our deals and we have a good pipeline. So it really depends on the role. And this is also what is specific for the business process monitoring in Cloud ALM. The target group or the user group is the business. And this is what, what changed and what is also special for this use case from the operations area. How are we doing this? Um, you can see here, um, we are checking for exceptions, for example. We are checking, is there anything what we can see in the system based on the business data um, that is not looking okay. We try to provide an end-to-end -end transparency, for sure, because um, we are talking here about a process and a process health, and we always need to take or to consider the full span. We are also um, offering alerts, which you've seen in a plenty of slots. And this means we would like to inform on a certain critical situation, react to it, and point the respective teams or persons to that specific topic in order to work on. Here we do, we need to consider that there are different values, which we will see later. So um, for a large company, maybe 1,000 might be a critical value. For others, 10 might be critical. And this is really what, what depends. And the how? is that we do have the customer landscape connected to our cloud ALM, which you can see here on the right-hand side. Um, we are identifying potential business disruption, collecting the data, and providing them in the cloud ALM in the business process monitoring with a visualization layer, meaning based on KPIs, which are mapped to an end-to-end -end process. And what you need to know in order to really benefit from using it is that we do have multiple types of KPIs. 
So first of all, as mentioned, the KPIs are assigned to a certain process step. So you have the high level, the end-to-end -end process, and then that there are two sub-levels, as you can see here. Lead to cash, order to cash, manage customer order. And then here are four samples for KPIs. And these KPIs are collecting on the one hand side the data a little differently, but they are also giving different indications. For example, if you start with a sales document created, this is checking how many business documents are created over a certain period of time. This is a so-called throughput KPI. You can also recognize them, and you can see it, there's a small different icon, it depends on. The second area is a backlog KPI. That is, for example, open sales documents, meaning documents which are not yet in a final state and some processing is required, an action is required, whatever action. This is just a backlog, so a large backlog can be good. A large backlog can also be critical if we consider that there are resources behind and a team behind who needs to process those objects. The next category is the exception KPI. Here we are collecting error situations, meaning we are checking how many errors are there in. For here it is the failed um, goods movements during process order confirmation, as you can see. So collecting errors. And last but not least, the lead time. So it is also an indicator on the business process health, how long it takes, for example, from an order creation till the invoice is sent. Because only if we have this order, and if you also send the invoice, we get the money. And if the time is going up, that isn't that good. Or maybe if the time is really going down, maybe a step in between what's missed. And these are the four types which you can use and which you can then see also within our content. And now, that's enough from my end. I would like to hand it over to Thomas, who will introduce us to the Cloud ELM and the Business Process Monitoring at ESB. Thank you very much, Cathy, for the opportunity with you. Uh, really welcome to our slot today. Um, I'm here um, to present you our POC. Um, with BPMON at Cloud ALM at Energy South Barbaria. We prepared the following agenda uh, for our slot today. First of all, I want to introduce myself. My name is uh, Thomas Muller. I'm responsible for the ALM LOB at SOE People Germany. You see here, normally I'm not alone. Uh, I have Patrick Steitz with me, but regarding his S4HANA transformation <coughs> project and the blend going live, um, he is not able to join us today in person, but we prepared um, a short video message um, from him for you uh, to introduce him. A welcome from Munich. My name is Patrick Staats and I am manager responsible for SAP development. And in this context, I'm also responsible for our ALM strategy. As we are about to go live with Esbohana, I'm unfortunately not able to attend the ALM summit in person but I still wanted to take the opportunity to be a part in this session. So let me introduce ESB, our transformation journey and our ALM mission. As we always wanted to benefit from SAP Innovations, we started our cloud ALM journey a few months ago. As a first step, we decided to focus on operations as per SAP guidelines and are now in the process of implementing operations capabilities supported by SAP Cloud ALM. As a second step, we decided to focus on business process monitoring to ensure and improve the health of our business processes. So thank you very much for having us here. And with that, I'll turn the floor over to Thomas, who has been an important part of our SAP Cloud ALM team from the beginning. Okay, that, that was Patrick. Um, he is the head of our customer department. I want to introduce shortly ESB. Uh, that's a, an uh, energy company which is located in Munich. Uh, there are a couple of companies together. They are running the energy grid in the south area of Bavaria, especially in the gas and electricity area. They are located uh, in Munich. They are over 50 years in the market and they're sponsoring a lot of uh, education <coughs> topics and sports and cultural things in the south Bavarian area. There are some um, Topics like over 400 employees are working there and running um, all the grid topics and also the maintenance there. Um, actually, 
they are um, bring um, they bring energy to over 160k households and also um, selling <coughs> over 15 terawatt of gas and 106 terawatt of electricity. No? The full energy grid has a length over 9.5k kilometers and uh, they have a lot of grid connections which are all maintained through the SAP solution. No? Very important for us today is the structural thing of the IT department. They are running their whole landscape with over 40 FTEs and of that team, 19 FTEs are <coughs> running the SAP stack end-to-end on-premise as well in the cloud. From that team, 1.25 1 uh, FTEs are taking care about the ALM topics. Huh? You see in the next slide how important the ALM strategy is at ESP in Munich. Huh? You see here, the system landscape is coming from a clear, structured, um, old-school um, way. means we have a lot of on-premise systems at ESP in the past, like ECC, like BI, like BO, Adobe Service and such things, yeah, which are run well. And now uh, the strategy goes in a more um, hybrid scenario, and we are talking more or less about the ESP digital core. The landscape is looking today like that. That's the actual status of the landscape. You see we are running in the middle a clear core strategy with ECC, actually, <coughs> which comes later, or which is actually in the transformation phase to S4HANA. No? There are also public cloud software components in as well as a lot of non-SAP software which are connected to each other. Okay, um, now we want to give you a short um, a few in the history of ALM at ESP. Uh, we started in 2009 with the implementation of Solution Manager 4.0. Since then, Patrick and I, we are working close together and implementing over the years a lot of different scenarios, functionalities, processes around the ALM topic. You see, for example, in 2017, we migrated to HANA database as well as the full um, on-premise landscape. <coughs> Very important is the year 2022 where the S4HANA transformation project started. We decided in that time to implement the latest functionalities, the support packages, into a solution manager to support the big S4HANA program. We uh, rerun that exercise at the beginning of that year to get the latest updates in. No? What is our motivation? No? The motivation is to support the big S4HANA migration program at ESP with all the functionalities of SAP Solution Manager ALM. The second topic uh, was the clear uh, end of life of Solution Manager and the lack of knowledge uh, regarding the cloud ALM portfolio at the customer as well at our side. We decided to have a two-step approach. First of all, we um, implemented the health monitoring at cloud ALM um, by side with the local monitoring and alerting infrastructure, which is handling the digital core of ESP, including real-time monitoring and alerting. In the second step, we started a couple of months ago with the BPMON scenario to have a clear databases um, in the BPMON, also from a business point of view, business process point of view, not just from a technical point of view. The next steps are in the future to have um, also a roadmap step for the other ALM scenarios like change request management and test management, which are really um, important for our customer scenario here. The motivation, the, as, as mentioned, is the S4HANA program. You can see here some key facts. We decided at that customer scenario to build up a new S4HANA greenfield system installation out of SAP's delivery box without a greenfield or brownfield approach. We decided for a selective data migration. In that context, we also decided to take over some custom code um, with a clear vision uh, to reduce the custom code and get a more or better clean core. It was also de decided that ISU is not transformed to S4HANA, and we supported all that stuff, all the whole project, with the following solution manager scenarios. Change request management, IT service management, test management, CCLM, MI, as well as interface morning, monitoring. That's a very important part. On top, we have built um, a dashboarding solution on solution manager, BI content, plus the sub-analytics cloud as a UI layer. Coming now to the cloud ALM topic. 
we started from scratch means, uh, first of all, we requested an SAP Cloud ALM tenant at mesub.com. It's a very easy and fast exercise, especially compared with the uh, Greenfield installation of a solution manager system. Um, after that, you receive an email with all the details, log on information, and also your links. The second step, it's needed to connect your managed systems, your on-premise landscape, which is also very fast and easy compared with your with a solution manager managed system set up scenario. After you have done that, uh, you take a little bit time, take a coffee, for example, because the auto-discovery jobs are running. Eh? After that, all the data which are gathered in the on-premise landscape, in our case, are transferred to SAP Cloud's ALM tenant. You see here the little hero. After the data arrived at Cloud ALM, you are directly able to use BPMON and have a deep insight and a deep view into the data. For more information, you can scan the QR code here, and you are directly landing at the support site of SAP to find more information. So. Summary from my side, it's really fast uh, to get a Cloud ALM tenant uh, in your landscape. It's also easy to um, install uh, the managed system setup, means the connectivity is fast and without any um, uh, hard, complex infrastructure details like a Cloud connector. So it's not needed to install something at DMZ or maintain something like Cloud Connector. You directly can connect via internet. And the third thing, if you have a well-maintained landscape, it's not needed to implement any updates. Just uh, checking the service tools, implement some SAP node corrections, and that's it. Huh? You can see here um, the steps. It's a four-step approach. First of all, check your service tools like STPI if you're on the latest level. It's not uh, nothing to do. Then you have to run the initial setup report where you have to put in some details like um, uh, names, credentials, and such things. You select the scenarios which you want to use. And after that, uh, our C destination is created and um, the jobs are running in your system, gathering the data and transferring the data into Cloud ALM. Coming now to the business process monitoring use case. Here um, we have uh, a clear uh, topic. We want to have a clear view from a business process point of view to the health status of the processes, not just from a technical point, as already mentioned. And here we have um, connected the ECC source system before the transformation started, and we're also connecting the s systems after the transformation. We want to have a good feeling what it means that the processes are fine and healthy. We want to compare the data between the source and the target landscape, especially in context of the transition to a new system, new processes, new, uh, new, new, new ISA. Especially from a um, process point of view for ESP, it's very important to have a clear view from contract signing to invoicing. Yeah? clear business case of energy supply company. Now I want to go to uh, give you a short demo about our cloud ALM implementation. <coughs> Going here into an ESP cloud ELM tenant. We are running here um, cloud LM for operations and then you can start the business process. Okay. Sorry for that. Going back. That's ESB's Cloud ALM tenant. You see, we received some updates since five minutes. <laughs> we are running an application which is located in the operations part of Cloud ALM. Here you find the business process monitoring app. We go in. You see here now um, the entry point. Here we have a configuration wheel, which is very important in Cloud ALM in general. We have here the managed components, for example. We selected the development systems, and here you see also an activation button. Um, that's an uh, important thing, because after the initial setup is running, or uh, performed well, all the systems and clients are activated. So it could be a good idea later on to deactivate QA systems and development systems, um, especially all the data are stored in Cloud ALM and it uh, could be a, a much amount of data. 
Um, then we have here um, also the option to, one second, we have here, to select the systems. That's uh, the systems which are, well, which are foreseen for our demo case today. We apply it and all the data are updated regarding that selection. No? We have here also the option to select a time frame, for example, a quarter, the last 24 hours, seven days or a week, which is directly leading to an updated result here in our UI. We have here on the control panel also the option to go to the KPI management, and you see here a lot of KPIs which are given at SAP standard. Eh? You see also KPIs which are not active eh? because <coughs> here are solutions in which are not part of your local landscape. For example, success factors, KPIs, or something like that, which is not um, part of your local scenario. The auto discovery jobs are taking care and just activating that KPIs which are important for you. You have here the option to select just the active ones, and you also see here a last update information. You see the data arrived at Cloud ALM today. So we go here a little bit on the left hand side. We select um, lead to cash, and then we go to order to cash, and you see here now all the KPIs which are updated with data out of your local system. No? You see also a lot of functionalities, for example, uh, built-in help where the definition of the KPIs is given and directly accessible. You can select the star to get, fav uh, get the KPI in your local favorites, and you also have the, oh, um, sorry, also have the option um, to select here or get the information about operation mode, especially if you're using that one. The business users are informed with that information about the normal mode. For example, if a system is in maintenance or has an outage, the data are not updated or uh, on the latest level, and the business users are integrated and informed well. So we are looking for one um, KPI like here, the incomplete sales documents, which, which is very important for ESP. No? You have here directly the data out of your system. You see the document number, for example. You see the sales document type as well, and sales in, um, organization information, such things. You can take this information with you in your local system to get a deeper, uh, deeper information. Now, it's not just the aggregated data. They are also uh, fulfilled with real information out of your system. No? We have the opportunity here. Um, to select um, the personalized button, to uh, integrate the distribution channel, for example. And we deselect the customer to get a better information. For example, you see here now our um, details like PAL. That's a, a local um, distribution unit um, of ESP. And we now want to select um, or create one event, one alert on that business KPI. It's really easy. You go to the configuration wheel, select here again the needed KPI. And then you have here the opportunity to define events. Huh? You see here um, already defined events. We take the description with us and implement here a new one. No? Very important, like a traffic light, you can define here your values, which is, comes to yellow or red, no? and you can define some filters, like um, the sales organization in our case. And on top, we have the distribution channel. That one, it was the 51. We select that one here. And now we can activate our communication opportunities. Um, for example, we want to get an email, then we can activate it. We can select our recipients. And we can say, okay, great alert. And on top, what is really nice, because it fits to the ESP communication strategy, it's easily possible to integrate Microsoft Teams. And if I say easily, it's really easy. 
It took roughly 10 minutes to connect Cloud ALM to Teams, and it directly pushes the alerts into a Teams channel. No? If you read the documentation from starting point, then you are faster. No? I skipped the first three lines, but it's very important to read that as well. No? Everything is given there. No? You select your Teams channel and say OK, and then you have um, two communication opportunities if the alert comes up. It goes via email out and also gives a push, a push notification into Teams. You save it, and after that, it takes a little bit time that Cloud ALM calculates um, the new alert and triggers the communication behind. Huh? So now um, we tested it in up before and upfront of that, uh, of that um, uh, session, but it is not working actually. Uh, at Cloud ALM. That's the reason why we prepared um, the last test. Uh, that's the email notification which, which comes up. You see here clear um, the alert description and also what happened. You have the option to go into the alert inbox and the alert directly. And you see here there are some issues with, uh, um, with the German names like Südbayern or Pale. Not every sign is possible to communicate from Cloud ALM, but it's already uh, reported to SAP to get an update on that. Huh? In Teams, it looks like the following, and that's the team channel, which is normally triggered. You see here also the same details and also the option to go directly into the alert, yeah? especially if you have a local organization, local team organization, which gets um, direct information, you can use that easily, especially if you have different departments and communication lines, you can integrate everything. Going back into Cloud ALM, you have here also the option to use views. For example, here you can uh, save your view uh, with your uh, selection criteria to don't do that every time you from scratch and new. No? On, on top, uh, uh, com uh, compared with Solution Manager, you have a lot of help and built-in support opportunities which are directly available in Cloud ALM. You can go into the help and you see here, for example, a direct interaction, which button, button means, means what. And you also can go to the question mark and get here directly information, what it means, how to use, and also links to further sites. Huh? On top, there's a video tutorial integration, which is really helpful. Uh, and it comes up here, you can put on play and uh, directly uh, a video with uh, details um, explains you more. Um, the other topic, which is really nice from my perspective, you have so-called uh, the built-in support, which gives you the opportunity to interact directly with SAP uh, to open a ticket out of the um, business process monitoring app. Huh? It takes a little bit because yeah, okay. it authenticates you with your universal ID, and you can have the option directly to report a new issue, which is a really nice feature from my perspective. Huh? Coming back to the slides. In the slides, I put it all the screenshots in of the demo, as well as the alerts. Huh? And here you see. Um, what happens if you have a real alert in your inbox and you opened the, the alert, you have now the possibility to work with that alert, confirm the alert, add com comments, uh, add a processor, and so on. And if you have uh, configured the uh, interface to an ITSM tool like ServiceNow, you also can create ba on, ba uh, on that basis um, a ticket in your incident management tool. No? Here is a screenshot about um, the central alert inbox. If you have uh, alerts in, you can work with that. That's more or less your task list. Huh? Okay, we have seen the demo and the support stuff. And now, at the end, I have um, a short roadmap what is planned next. As you know, the next uh, topic for uh, Cloud ALM at ESB um, is the going live of S4HANA. After that, uh, in the stabilization and the hypercare phase of it, we go forward and we want to um, check the next options like integration and exception monitoring 
And after that, we have to check the security topic. Actually, in Solution Manager, we are using system recommendation to identify the security nodes which are relevant for the on-premise landscape. That goes to maintenance planner, I think so. That's the next step. And after that, we check the service readiness and all the other stuff regarding the SAP Cloud, the LM functionalities and roadmap. So at the end, nice slide from Munich. Vielen Dank. And if you have questions, come later back. <laughs>Thanks a lot for all the insights. As mentioned, um, we do have one more topic. This is our feature spotlight, which was also mentioned yesterday. This is about um, a feature which is a little bit longer in the basic version available. This is the access control. So um, we started um, with um, offering the option to reduce what is visible to an end user on a process perspective. You can imagine that um, someone who is walking, working in, in the S4 area, in the ERP um, environment, is only interested in such areas of the KPIs. And on the other hand side, if we do look at success factors and recruiting KPIs, this is something which should really be only available for the respective HR recruiters. And here is where the access control comes into the game and is helping you also to um, offer the users the best possible experience of the solution and that it is designed from a process perspective also to their needs. In general, as each feature, and this is only one feature I'm mentioning, you can find all the features in the What's New with the description, so you can also track what we are currently working on for you and you can subscribe it. So whenever we publish something, and this is what we are continue, continuously doing every second week, there are new things in Cloud ALM available, then you get a notification latest the next day and then you can directly check out um, on which topics we are working and con consume these features. This is how we started with the access groups. There was a general information, the process scope as mentioned, and you could assign the access groups to users. And what is now available are attributes. So here you can see in addition to um, which process areas can a user see, it's also which areas of the business data is available, such as the organization. So is it only data which is available or which is relevant for Germany? Is it any, any global data sales organization, um, legal entity <laughs> codes, for example, and success factors? And with this, you can really tailor the application from a process level as well as also the business data level to the end users. Let's have a look at this on an example. Here we are now looking at Kim. Kim is a recruiter and we started with the access groups that um, Kim is supporting the managers during the recruiting um, as well as the offboarding of the employees. We are here in the end-to-end -end process of recruit to retire. And this is how the application is looking in the beginning and as you've also seen it in the demo. We can see all the end-to-end -end processes and on the right-hand side we can see all the KPIs which is for sure a good starting point, but not what is really required from a business perspective and data segregation perspective. Um, these settings were available, so you have the description, and we could say, okay, Kim is only having everything what is in the track to um, retire, and assign the group to a user. If we now have also um, a look at the application, after activating the access control, we can only see the end-to-end -end process where our sub-process is open, so only one end-to-end -end process, and here only one process column. So this is where we started. And then we got a requirement from a business perspective. Kim is working on global positions and Germany positions only. Everything else, which is for example in US, shouldn't be visible for Kim. And this is a usual setup which you do have, you have a restriction. You might also have it within a country that a specific sales organization or legal entity codes need to be separated and the data needs to be secured. And not everyone should see details on, on open positions, for example, or on hiring processes. And therefore, there's these attributes tab now included where you can maintain the values. And here we maintain best company and um, best run Germany. This is demo data, so I expect more realistic values at your end. Um, in the KPI, here you can see what happens 
with these changes in the access group. Here we can see more legal entity codes and on the right hand side we can see the restriction to only one entity code. And it's not only in the KPI details, it is also in the value helps for sure because even the master data needs to be secured from that perspective. Some takeaways for these topics, if you do not maintain attributes, all the data is available, is visible to the users. If um, you have multiple groups because you split it per single values, the groups are additive, so you can assign users to multiple groups and then the respective business data is visible. And if someone is having administrator rights, last but not least, access groups are kind of not considered. So make sure that you are not assigning administrator roles to every end user. So start with the consumer roles, for example, or viewer roles, everything is perfect. So if you're wondering why access control is not working, check out which roles are assigned. If you would like to experience now also Kim, and this is what you can do after the session, on our public demo tenant. There you have these user credentials for the different scenarios. There's Kim available. So you can log on after that session or later on to this um, session with Kim and see the result directly, how it is looking with a general user and how Kim is, can now use the business process monitoring with the access groups. Coming now to a conclusion. You learned some basics if you've not yet checked out business process monitoring or not yet used it. Um, then we had a lot of customer insights from my perspective with a comprehensive demo to really see how it is used at customer sites and we looked at a spotlight. What happens behind is that we are continuously delivering. So we are working on features and also next week, for example, there will be new features available. So expect more to come and that's also why your feedback is so important to us. So whenever you have a question, you have a feature request, you do see something where we can help you with using business process monitoring and help you with monitoring the processes. You can now use the influence, you can reach out to me, you can reach out to us, and we are working on the topic. Because this is helping us to really provide you the best possible solution for the business process monitoring. And this is then what you can do, benefit from using it. Um, as you might want to read, about the topic more or explore it or also check out how Kim is using the application and the UI is looking like. Here you have a collection of links um, where you can find all the information. And as spotted, we have now also influence campaign running and we are looking for your feedback and requests and the first requests already arrived. We will check out these feedbacks also, you can support by voting certain topics and then we'll come back with feedback and in best case, make them part of our planning and delivery so that you can use it best. <laughs>